Hi, it's about uh, 20 years since an extrovert West Country guitarist changed his name from Paul Francis Gad to Gary Glitter. His first concert filled the Village Hall in Wiltshire. The rest, rock history. Remember, I'm the leader. <laughs> oh, you old poser, and here he is. <laughs> Love it. You look so much younger now, though. Oh, thank you. And slimmer. Thank you. You know how to make a young boy happy. <laughs> <laughs> It's no, I feel it. good actually looking at that. I am slimmer. God, I, I did put on. Yes, that's, but that, that was, was during all my drinking. Was sort of yeah, that was when I was then. drinking and boozing. You know, terrible, terrible yeah, times. Yeah, clean liver now. You're teetotal. Absolutely, boy. ten years now. And a vegetarian. I haven't touched a vegetarian. I do wear the occasional leather jeans. Though. I've never found imitation leather very good. Have you? Um, no, Gary. What a question! I've never been asked that before. <laughs> yeah, but it just doesn't quite oh, work. Just you know, I'm working like that. on that one because I'd like to get rid of the leather altogether. You know, being a vegetarian, it seems yeah. a little bit strange. But, yeah. And do you keep yourself fit? Do you go running? Very fit. Yourself? Ten. Yesterday I did four miles. Day before four miles. Then I did ten miles the day before. I try and do about three days a week, ten miles, and the rest about four or five. You know, because the old joints are aching a bit now. Mm. So I'm not. As I say, I'm not. Actually, are you sure you're not sort of overdoing it? As far as that's concerned, you no. sort of tip the balance totally and you're now... I, I mean, I'm, I, I actually go running with my doctor, the local doctor in my village. That's, down good, in that's good insurance, yeah. though. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and, he's, and actually he went in for the London Marathon last year for me, which is good, yeah. So did this, um, you know, being fit and going vegetarian and being teetotal, is that a sort of reaction to the, the horrors of the mid-80s for you? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, you know, your life is a series of chapters, isn't it? And, and, you know, I've done that one, and now I can actually turn around and say, OK, there is an alternative way. The fitness thing is so much better high. It's a much better high than, than all the drugs. And I, having been down that road, and most of my friends, I mean, uh, the, you know, Mark Bolan, uh, Keith Moon, uh, you know, are dead. So somebody has got to be around live enough why to do, say... Why do pop you know, stars so often get involved in things like that? I think... i tell you what it was with, with, with me, Nick. You know we're in the days of video nowadays. We were just pre-video days. So I went to Australia twice in one week. Now, I had to be awake when I got off the plane to do television straight away. All these things. Now, nowadays, I say, no way. I want, a 20, I, I want to sleep for eight hours, then I'll do a show. But in those days, I was caught up in this whole thing of being awake, trying to get some sleep. And so the drugs came into it from that. And, and booze is something, you know, that um, my, my stepfather used to say, oh, you know, meet us up in town. And I used to sort of think nothing of sitting on the stairs in a pub and having a half a shandy right from the age of about 11 whereas now I think families are inclined to say let's go to the gym you know they don't all live in the pub the whole yeah, time and, and it must be the pressures of being constantly in the yeah. spotlight as well I mean that yeah. must you, you seek solace well, you know in various you think other... that you've got to smile all the time and be you know and every day everybody has their bad days don't they I mean you wake up and you you every day doing your show you, you look know pretty rough don't you, I, yeah, yeah, well, yeah no yeah. you look great but I mean you, you always have those moments when you think, oh, I've got to lift myself up. Well, you know, you look, when you came in earlier, when you came in strutting your yeah. stuff, you, you sat down and you made a joke about hidden cameras. I mean, yeah. you know, we, we are yeah. hearing such a lot at the moment, particularly with relevance to Princess Diana, about privacy. Um, it leads me into just giving you a quick news flash, if you don't mind. Um, writs against, um, in fact, solicitors ask, uh, acting for the Princess of Wales have now issued High Court writs over the publications of those photographs. Writs against Mirror Group newspapers, editors of Sunday and Daily Mirror, and against the gym and its owner, um, uh, seek permanent injunctions banning further publication and surrender of pictures and negatives in their possession. What sort of attitude do you have to the press? I mean, bearing in mind recently they've been saying that you wear a wig and so on. And oh, uh, well, I've had as it were. hair raising experiences. <laughs> Pass. Kiss and tell <laughs> stories. Um, I mean, you know, that was over 33 years of being Gary Glitter now, I've had 
90% good press and very, maybe 10% of, of, of negative press. So I've been a very lucky person, primarily. I do think that every now and again, it's like all these things, the pendulum swings a bit, and, and they sometimes are going too far. I think hidden cameras, um, you know, microphone bugs, just whether it be the MI5 or whether it be the press or whatever, I think is going too far. And so, fortunately, somebody um, um, like the princess, um, you know, if, if she drags it back into line a little bit, I think it would make everybody feel a little bit better. But does, does a story like saying that you wear a wig do any harm, do you think? Well, no, it doesn't do any harm to me because, see, I, I mean, you know, what really would worry me is if somebody mentioned about my wooden leg and my glass eye and the, and the battery-operated... Yeah, uh, strangely, thing. that wasn't mentioned. <laughs> I know, but I've just let it out, you know. And, I mean, there's so many secrets about me to come out, you know. Um, but, uh, no, I think that it's fun, you know. I dress up. I mean, we're in show business. If you want to have a list of people that you want to tear down, then uh, we, we could be here for for months yeah, and years. Yeah, but it's destructive and I'm not sure people want to read that anyway. I don't think they do. I, my fan mail, any time I'm in the press, for whatever reason, is always amazing and supportive. So I have no fears because I know that the people that really are very fond of me and are fond of my work and my music and everything else don't care as stuff, you know, they, they just, whew, to, you know. They, they, well, let's, let's talk about something else that you're very interested in. We've been mentioning the 70s. It seems they'll never die. There's a, a massive revival going on at the moment, as I'm sure you're aware. And one band in tune with this trend is T. Rextasy, who based themselves on one of the greatest rock groups to grace that era. Bang a gong, get it on, was Mark <laughs> Boland's biggest US hit ever. Look at this. Like a call, you got a Oh, you're wonderful. in your element, aren't yeah. you? And they'll be telling us that Elton John wears a wig next, won't they? Oh, yeah. I know. Ridiculous. I know. Who would ever think it? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> introduce us to your mate here, Daniels. Daniels. Mm. I went to see him in a pub the other day because I was looking for, you know, who could support me this year? And I've always had, you know, the, the most important, you know when you play to 12,000 people in, in the NEC, for an example, or Wembley or, or wherever, you know, the people at the back, you know, even if you've got video screens and everything, it's the songs, it's the music that's so important. And I thought, who would they like to hear this year? At one point I was thinking of Susie Quattro, and then... Yeah, that's some, that, somebody else you're meant to be having an affair with, is that right? Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. How's it going? Actually, she's getting married. So, uh, if she's watching, congratulations, wonderful. No, that was Gio. I mean, again, that's the press being being silly. Wasn't really. even slightly true. No, well, we met up. We we had a meeting about um, you know let's do it. Let's do, come and do the tour, because at one point I was going to have Susie and Daniels. Doesn't he look like Mark it's Boland? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Isn't this great? Isn't the gear great? It's based on original Mark. Is it? Mark that's clothes, oh. especially the, the smock tops and stuff that he used to wear. I can't believe that and we used to wear that. Have you always been a stuff. great admirer of his? Yeah, I've been a fan for a long, long time. I mean. Um, I think it, Mark deserves a lot um, better press than he's, than he's got. I think uh, um, hopefully we'll gain more momentum in, and, and gain a younger following as well. But well, there's still a terrific following for Mark Berlin, isn't there? Well, his music is terrific. And I mean, he was, to, as far as I'm concerned, he was the king of glam. He started glam, you know, the so-called glam that everybody's on about. Mine was glitter, and I think David Bowie was more the spaceman, you know. Um, and uh, I don't think we could have had all those people that came. Mark Boland was actually about a year ahead of his time. So, Daniels, what do you do? You do all the, all the numbers, do you? We do all the hits, but also we don't want to be known as a, a singles band. I mean, in our own show, I do a, an acoustic set, just like T-Rex used to, but also we do um, tracks that um, from albums and things like that that Mark never really uh, played live himself. So, um, and that the T-Rex fans want to hear those kind of things, and we do that. But um, with Gary um, and his gang, obviously, we're going to... Um, do just bang, bang, bang out the hits, and I think it'd be a, a great combination. It'd be a fabulous night. Yeah, Gary, yeah. Yeah. So your, your tour starts on what? I've just dropped a piece of paper. Well, my tour Excuse starts me. on. I think it's around about December um, the fourth. I would say as a guess. It's the fourth. Fourth in Dublin. Yeah. Then uh, with this two, two new ones. Well, not not 
there's one new one. There's Exeter West Point, which mm -hmm. normally we used to play Somerset, which is a Somerset showering pavilion, a bath showering pavilion. But we've now moved to Exeter West Point this year. Or oh, in Cardiff, there's a new place. I haven't been to Cardiff for, since Newport, which is about three or four years ago. And then Aberdeen, which is the furthest oh, so you're north. getting all round. The and then all, all the big arenas, which most of them, you know, are selling really well this year. Well, that, I think we, we hardly need to say so because apparently our phone lines are jammed with Gary Glitter fans at the moment, desperate to, to give messages of love and support. Thank you. And also to find out where all the gigs are. So don't worry, yeah, we'll be so passing all the information you can get the, uh, the details of uh, Gary's gigs uh, on 021 609 9000. Uh, can Gary Glitter please say a big hello to James Potts from Macclesfield? He's a big fan. He's eight years old and he's just about to go to his very first Gary Glitter concert. So you say hello to James. James, I'm the leader. <laughs> can he be in your gang? Definitely. Big You're guys, in the gang. It? Everybody's in the gang. <laughs> well, look, thanks for being with us. Great to see you today. And you, Daniels. Good luck with the tour. Yeah, great, great pleasure.